Hello and welcome to the seventh episode of Solved or Unsolved. This is a podcast where we talk about true crimes. These are actual crimes that, that have taken place. I'm your host, Brent. And in this episode, we're going to talk about a serial killer, Samuel Little. Now, Little, just as recently as in the last year, has admitted to killing 90 people, 9-0, 90 people. If, and some of these have been um, cooperated and they have been found to be true. If it would be 90, he would be the most prolific serial killer in United States history. Um, little, he's, he's 78 years old now. He, he's in bad health. He's in prison. Uh, but he started back in 1956. His first crime we know about was the theft of a bicycle. So he, he was sent to a, a boys' school somewhere in Ohio. But let me read you. I'm going to read the states where he has uh, committed crimes. The states are Ohio, Maryland, Florida, Maine, Connecticut, Oregon, Colorado, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Arizona, Georgia, Illinois, Missouri, and California. Now, Samuel Little, he has many, many charges. I'm going to read the list of the charges. That, that he has had in his past life. These charges include burglary, breaking and entering, assault and battery, assault with the intent to rob, assault with a firearm, armed robbery, <laughs> assault on a police officer, solicitation of prostitution, DUI, shoplifting, theft, grand theft, possession of marijuana, unlawful flight to avoid prosecution, a re- resisting arrest, battery, false imprisonment, assault with a deadly with uh, <clears throat> with great bodily injury, robbery, rape, and sodomy. Now there was a um, uh, a reporter. Uh, his last name was Roberts. That did the math on all of this, on all of these charges I just read out in, in his past, and for all of this, Samuel Little served just ten years. All together for all those crimes I just admitted, I mean, just admit, just talked about, he only served 10 years total. Now, little, it was in September of, of, I believe it was 1976, he was arrested in Missouri for the rape, assault, and uh, in Missouri it was called great bodily injury and robbery of a lady named Pamela Smith. Now, Smith, um, Little had her in his car. You'll find out his car was a, um, a brown um, Pinto station wagon. Miss Smith was able to escape from his car, and she was running through the night naked. Her hands were bound behind her with a cloth and electrical cord, and she was able to actually run to a house and get help. Now, Little had strangled her, bitten her, beat her, and sodomized her. Little was convicted of a lesser charge of assault and served only three months for this. Now, I'm going to get on my soapbox here for a minute. He had strangled her, bitten her, beat her, and sodomized her. He got sentenced to three months. You know, you, you, I, I've seen people... Um, get caught with an ounce of weed and do longer jail time than what uh, Samuel Little did with what he did to this woman. Uh, the justice system, a lot of times it works. A lot of times it doesn't work. It's, it's messed up. It, it really is. And uh, here's another example. In September of, ni- of 1982, they found the nude strangled body of 26-year-old Patricia Mount if it was in Florida. Witnesses, witnesses identified Little as the last person seen with her in his brown pinto station wagon. Now, this is 1982. I don't, you may, but I, I haven't seen a lot of brown pinto station wagons. It would pretty much stand out. They found out in court that the hairs that were found on the victim were similar to Little's. He was tried for the crime. 
but due to a lack of what they said, uh, definite physical evidence, the jury acquitted him. So 26-year-old woman, she's nude, she's strangled. She is dead. He is seen, eyewitnesses see her getting into the car, his car with him. The hairs are similar, found not guilty. Jury acquitted him. Now, month after that, they found 22-year-old Melinda, her LaPree is her name. She was found in a cemetery. It was somewhere in Mississippi. Uh, you know, just three weeks before that, her boyfriend had reported her as missing. Uh, she uh, had been strangled. The um, I, I don't know the proper name. The bone and the cartilage in the neck were um, damaged, stating that it, showing that it was strangulation. Here again, you got witnesses identified little as a man who was driving the Brown Pinto station wagon and saw her get into. Uh, people were interviewed. He actually he, he was charged. He was arrested for her murder, but. They were dismissed, showing lack of physical evidence, and he went free again. And you're probably thinking like me. You know, I just named three three um, crimes there that he got off. How in the world is this possible? But you got to remember, this was back in the 70s and 80s. You, you know, we, we did today with forensic files and, and CS, all, all the, the television shows on now, and with um, DNA. You commit a crime now, and, you, and we know now that you're going to leave some DNA. There, there was not a DNA thing going on in the 70s and 80s. Much, much easier to get away with crimes. But we did have, we have eyewitnesses. Now, here was the problem. And this is a problem in, in the justice system, and especially with police officers. The witnesses were known prostitutes. Uh, I disagree with this, but a lot of law enforcement officers do not give them any credibility. They probably just said, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Law enforcement should take every single eyewitness serious, period. Don't care who they are, what they've done. If, if they can say they saw this, this, and this, and there is evidence to show this, it should be credible. Um, some of you may disagree with me, but I think any eyewitness should be taken very seriously. And even today, now we have... DNA and, and other things that can that can corroborate the witnesses of, of whoever sees a crime happen. Now, in October of 1984, Little was actually caught by San Diego uh, patrol officers in the act of beating and strangling Tanya Jackson. He was in the back seat of his car. He was charged with rape and assault with great bodily injury. And the San Diego police were actually con uh, able to connect him to a September 84 attack on Lori Burrows. Um, she actually, he attacked her, raped her, was and strangled her, but she actually played dead. And she was he left her on the side of the road, and she was actually able to uh, testify to everything that happened. He was charged with two counts of assault with great um, bodily injury and a count of false imprisonment. He received a four-year sentence prison, a prison sentence, and uh, he served only a year and a half, and he was put on parole. Now, you, you have an eyewitness that, that, I mean, that, that survived this, and he still only got four years. I, I don't understand. I wasn't in law enforcement in the 80s. I, I, evidently, it was a different ball game. I, I don't understand this, but this guy's a bad guy. He, he's, he's committed a lot of crimes. And like I said now, he is admitting to over 90 murders that he has committed. Now, there was a, um, he's, he gets a little bit on law enforcement's, uh, um, what's it called, radar now at this point. It, they've connected him to a few things. It, there was a 2007, now this goes, he's, he's been free this whole time. He's at, and, and he has admitted to killing people uh, all over, uh, state to state to state. He's just traveling around. Um, they, the, they had a um, narcotics warrant on him. Uh, he was found, where was it? I believe he was found in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, and the way they found him, that a prepaid Walmart card with little Social Security um, number on the payments that were being deposited, it showed up. And so somehow they connected that to this um, homeless shelter in Louisville, Kentucky. And, and the U.S. Marshals uh, went and arrested him. They actually got him. Now at this point, 
they got a DNA hit on him. His uh, little uh, DNA had been detected on a bra and a fingernail kit of a um, lady, Carol Alford, that she had been strangled, um, I believe, is it like in 1987. So this was the tipping point. So in January of 2013, they filed three murder charges against Samuel Little. They, they had, um, they're starting to do the DNA on him and it started showing up. Now, another problem with that is 70s and 80s, we really didn't know as far as law enforcement about DNA. So a lot of times there were not things like a fingernail kit done. There were not a lot of things of hairs collected and things such as that. So if that if he did these things today, yes, he would have got caught much earlier with, with uh, DNA. But but he went a long, long time. So yes, he was found guilty of, of three counts of murder. He actually is doing three life sentences. He's seventy eight years old in bad health. Probably won't live very much longer. Now there was another. Um, he, he talked to a reporter. And she asked him, how did it feel to kill them? Here was his response. Ooh, it felt like heaven. Felt like being in bed with Marilyn Monroe. Then he made a statement. He said, I never killed no senators or governors or fancy New York journalists. Nothing like that. And he's talking to the reporter. He said, if I killed you, it'd be all over the news the next day. I stayed in the ghettos. That's what he said. He would go after um, women that were prostitutes or um, uh, drug addicts, things such as that. He, he And it, it worked for him. He said no one cared about those people, basically talking about law enforcement. Um, they, was, it, they were not looked for as if they were a more prominent person. Um, he, he, stu- he wanted to get away. He stuck to people that they really wouldn't notice if they were missing. You, you know, there's a lot of Jane Doe's um, that are, are have are missing or have been found that they don't have any family, and, and that's what he preyed on. That that's what he went after. Like I said, Little has claimed to have killed 30 people, and he, he's in prison uh, doing three life terms. He's never going to get out of jail. Um, he made a deal. He 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 was wanting to move to another prison. Now I don't know where that was. If it was closer to family members, better climate. I don't know what it was. But then he started talking to some uh, FBI guys, and that's where he is admitted to killing 90 people. Now, he has a very, very good memory. Uh, he, he did some drawings or paintings, and he's pretty good at it. Um, I'll, I'll put them up on um, solved or unsolved.com on the website, and you can see them. They're, they're uh, paintings or drawings. I can't tell which one they are, but they're very good. They're very, very detailed. Um, he knew of, he, he he drew these of eighteen women that he said he killed. Most of them now have been identified through DNA and other things, and there is confirmed now they can connect him to thirty four murders. After him giving the information, after giving details of what happened, where they were, he even knew the names, the first names of, of a few of these these people that he drew. But it's very very detailed. He. He knows a lot about the victims. He would study their eyes, study their their mouth, study their features in their face, and years later, able to draw them with with much detail. Now, I don't know about the 90, but they have confirmed 34. You know, I've had people ask me, well, why would he confess to all this if he didn't do it? All of them. Well, you know, it, and I can't, he's different. I can't get into his mind. But one thing, he had some motivation. He wanted to be moved to a different prison, which as far as I know, as I last read, he has not been moved. So that didn't work for him. But maybe he just wants to be, he's a horrible person. He's a zero killer. But maybe he just wants to be the best that there is. Um, I, that sounds weird, but if you do something, I mean, why not be the best at it? That, that sounds weird, but I, that's the only thing I can think the motivation is to admit to all this. He had no remorse. Um, he said he enjoyed killing them. It, it's not that he feels for their family and wants the bodies found so the pe- the families can be at a little peace and, and have their loved one back. 
It's not that reason. I think it's very, very selfish, and he's wanting to be known as the worst of the worst. That That's my personal opinion. I want to thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'm going to try to do at least two per week, um, if not more. Right now, I'm on night shift. I'm a law enforcement officer, so the, t- the time is pretty tight. But um, I will be off of, of night shift here in a couple, uh, two or three weeks, and then, and then I'll be able to do a lot more podcasts. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave me a positive review of wherever you're listening to it, um, on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, just basically anywhere you can find a podcast. Uh, tell family and friends they can go to solved or unsolved.com. All the podcasts are there. Again, thank you so much for listening.